same way as you. It feels like it's been a minute since I've been able to be in the sanctuary. I feel like I've been with everybody online and, and really enjoying getting to bring the word. Sometimes it feels kind of funny when you're by yourself, but sometimes it's the best times you'll ever spend with God, too. Yes. And I found that to be true. There's a couple things I want to make sure that I say uh, before we jump in. Uh, first of all, I don't think I've had a chance to say thank you to the church for all the love and support that you showed uh, through the passing of Angela's grandmother, Faye Griffith. Uh, we are still in grief mode. She was a patriarch, a saint of God, one of those mighty women that when she prayed for you, you knew that she prayed for you. And uh, to God be the glory for her life, and we miss her, but... It feels good for me to be able to say it felt like I had a church family that was lifting us up in prayer. So I just thank you for all of your love and support, for all that you did, all the food, all of the reaching out, all of that. Um, it doesn't fall on deaf ears. It didn't go unnoticed. Sometimes when you're going through that grief phase, you kind of miss out on those moments where you should say thank you. So I'm doing it now. Thank you. I love you and I appreciate you. I also want to thank everybody for their love and support for when I went through my phase of this sickness. There was probably a 48-hour period where I did not feel the greatest. But I remember when I was sitting in my quarantine and beating up on myself and feeling kind of alone. And the verse came to me that my grace is sufficient. And I realized that if I had left tomorrow, or if I was to continue my life, that His grace was still the same for me. So I know that our God is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. And I'm just thankful. I know the Lord still has me here for a reason, so I'm not going to squander it. I'm not going to take advantage of it. I'm here today to do what I know God has called me to do. Yes. So I love you. Thank you so much for all of your prayers, for everything, and your love and support. It really makes me feel at home and feel like I've got a good family here. Yeah. I want to begin reading today if you want to follow along out of your Bible or on your smartphone, however you want to get there, just get there to the book of Exodus. And I'm going to read out of chapter 2. And we're going to read two verses there. And then after we read that, we'll scoot on over to the 18th chapter of the same book. So if you'll bear with me. And if you want to stand for the reading of God's Word, if you're able, I encourage you to. If not, it's okay. The Lord knows all about it. We're going to read two verses in chapter 2, and then we'll go to verse 13 in chapter 18. So let me go ahead and read this while you are up on your feet. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intended thou to kill me as thou killedst the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. And let's flip over real quick to chapter 18. If you've got it, we'll go ahead and read it here. I'm going to read verse 13 right here, and then we'll come back to a few of these in a minute. It says in verse 13, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning into the evening. While we're standing, let's just go ahead and bless the word. God, we just ask that you would move for this message today, Lord. For God, we are nothing but flesh and a willing heart. But by your spirit, Lord, you anoint us for the hour and the moment that we're in. And I just pray, God, that this word would go out as you would have it. Nothing of ourselves, but all of you to be the glory, Lord. And I just pray that it go into the hearts of your people, God. That it would sow and cause us to think and cause us to change, God. We honor you and glorify you and bless you for the opportunity we've been given. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen, amen. and amen. amen. You may be seated. Thanks so much. I begin to search my heart and, you know, around this time of the year, you know, we always are wanting to make sure that we bring the emphasis upon Christ and His bringing and coming yeah. to the earth for the ultimate gift that was to come. And trust me, my friends, I tried my hardest to pray into some scripture that made sense for today. Yeah. But as I began to pray, my heart was led to a different place. 
And all that I can do is be obedient to what the Lord would want me to say in this hour. Because I don't know who needs this. I don't know why God is bringing it this way. But I'm just going to have to do it anyway. Because I don't want to live with it and take it home with me. God used this on me. And so I'm just telling you out of my experience some of what the Lord put on our heart today. As we come to this holiday time. We begin to have things start to go into motion, right? We begin to think about the moments and occasion where we want to get the family together. We think about the times where we want to be able to maybe gather with friends before the holiday. We begin to think about the holiday plays or the skits that we want to do. We start planning for who all can be there. We think about the benevolent things that we can begin to do for other people and think about, well, who can be there to do the delivery on this? Who can we get together to assemble on that? We have our work schedules that are going on, and we're trying to figure out, when am I going to be off work? When can I even be available to do some of this stuff? Because I know I'm going to have to get back before then in the new years. Yeah. I'm intentionally going through some of this out loud because this, yeah. these are the things that are going through in my mind and my anxiety as I start talking about this. starts going a little bit this way. Does anybody feel me this morning or know what I'm talking yeah. about? I begin to think about this and how that it's so easy for us when we get into this moment of the holidays to get in a mode, if you will, to where we flip on the switch, we know the things we need to do, but yet God may have something special in store. Right. Amen. But yet God wants to bless us through this season. Amen. So I'm going to be direct about this, and I don't know why God put this on my heart. I wish I could have changed it, but this is what I've got. We have to be careful not to just get in a mode through this season. Amen. And we need to check ourselves and be reminded of the true gift that was given for all of us. Yeah. So that it's not just a season of shopping. That it's not just a season of coming to church and making sure we take care of all the things we're being asked to do. But there's also an observation that needs to happen in all of our hearts. For without the gift of God that came as Jesus Christ for all of us, surely we would not be in the place where we could be today. To be as blessed as we are. To even have the opportunity to get to where we are now. So let me share with you what the Lord put on my heart for this. Oftentimes we have a great opportunity to sit down about this occasion and talk about what really matters. But most of the time we're in a hurry. Somebody say in a hurry. In a hurry. Other times we're in such a hurry to buy gifts or make sure we hit all these events or try to find some time from work. It feels like we're in such a rush. And any time that we probably could have to make more time for God begins to be under duress. Somebody say time. There's a lot of things that we might have control over to possess, to own, to be given, to feel. But there's one thing that we have no control over. That no matter how much we want to change it, no matter how many time zones we try to apply to it, there's one thing that is out of our control this morning, and it's time. It's also the one thing that God has given us the ability to put decisions around to use while the time is upon us to use it. Amen. How many of you know that this life is only temporary Amen. and it's just for a vapor? We'll blink our eyes and be 20 years from where we are today. And some of us that are younger, they'll have another chapter to live out. Some of us that are at the midpoint of our life, we're beginning to go into a season of relaxation and understanding and care for our family on another level. And some of us that may be at the end of our journey are beginning to wonder how soon that heaven will begin to call me home. Glory to God. But no matter where it is that you are, the one thing that we can't hit pause on, you can hit pause on the Facebook video. You can hit pause on reading any more email. You can pull over to the side of the road when you get done driving. But the one thing we cannot stop is time. And the Lord put the word time into my spirit today because I feel like we're in this mode of rushing through the things that we know that we should be doing because some obligation has wired it into our heart like we've got to get those things done. But I'm here to tell somebody today that the time that we are given when we are assembled together in the presence of the Lord is not just an opportunity that came by happenstance, but the Lord you out of the trials of your life, out of the things you have been through, 
Rochelle. Time. Time is a funny thing. I've blinked, and I've realized I'm in my latter 30s, and I begin to wonder well, where the beginning of them go. And I'm starting to think about what the, my 40s will look like. And I look at my job and things I'm going through. And everything goes so fast. And I'm just going to confess that of my own self. And if you don't want to raise your hand and say that's me too, that's okay. But there'll be some times that I get a call. But because all this other stuff's going on, I say to myself, well, I'll call them back when I have time. <laughs> or somebody will send me a text message and it just says like, hey, how you doing? I and I don't understand what they're going through or why they need me to respond. And I look at that and I'm thinking about what I have, the next five things I have to do. And I'll say to myself, well, I'll get back to that when I have time. And I begin to think about when I come to church and wanting to do more with the gifts and callings that I've been given. And lots of songs that I'd love to learn and do better in. And lots of ways that I'd like to develop the things in my ministry and the way that I preach and the way that I learn and understand it. But then I look at everything else going on in my life and this phrase comes back to me. Well, I'll get to it when I have time. Amen. And yet, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost all over me today. And yet we get to the places where things begin to happen and we begin to suffer. And the reflex and the things that we have taught him that we have been taught that we should know and understand begin to try to rise up in us and our spirit, man and woman, begins to try to check us. But our flesh begins to push back against these things and say, well, I'll get down and pray for them when I have time. Glory to God. It's not just your money that God cares about. It's not just your presence in the building that God cares about. But God cares about what you are doing with how you invest your time. How you give God glory by taking a slice out of your life and letting Him be glorified will ultimately cause you to grow in a way you never thought you could. That whether we realize it or not, we begin to put time boxes on God and say, well, I'll give you the time when I come to church on Sunday. Or I'll give you the time when I can get there on Wednesday. But when we begin to suffer, we'll put ourselves through everything else in order to try to be happy instead of giving God uh, yes. his time. Yes. Uh, Amen. This is tough preaching. I mean, so you bet you're thinking this is the strangest holiday message I've ever heard, Brother Jerry. Great, great. As much as we lift our hands and as much as we do the things when it is convenient for us to do it for God. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's really convenient to give God praise when you're here. It's really easy to get beside somebody and shout and have a good time when they're doing it with you. But what about when it's tough? We give God the same time that we would when it is convenient for us while we're already here. I find that there were plenty of distressing times in the Bible. We read about Jehoshaphat. And how in that time, it probably felt a little bit difficult to assemble everybody together and begin to pray. Yet without that investment of time, for God, would they have realized such a great victory? I find that when the Lord begins to instruct us, he put it more simply than that and said, seek you first the kingdom of heaven. But in order to seek, it requires you to make the investment of time for God. Let me go ahead and put it like this. There is a direct correlation with the growth that you have in your life, your growth that you have in God, your growth that you have in ministry, directly correlated with the amount of times that you are taking time to give it to God when you could have had time to do something else. To seek God first means to prefer God over something else. To put Him above something else means you're saying, I've got to make more time for God than I do this other thing. Now things are important, family is important, Getting together is important, but let me tell you, there's nothing more important than coming together under the banner of Jesus Christ and worshiping God and giving Him glory and giving Him honor and praise. For when we were without, when we didn't have anything and we didn't know that we were broken, God took the time to love us when we didn't have anything else and we were, we were beyond being repaired. God took the time to love me anyway. Somebody ought to praise Him for this this morning. When we 
Just hold on, my child, because he's not too far away. Try. Right. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> the Lord Hallelujah. not only moves for us in our time of need, he also moves right on time. Our lives, we don't understand what tomorrow may bring. We don't know when it's going to be good or going to be bad. We always hope for good, but unexpected things come. But I'm here to tell you, you can either use time for your advantage, or time will become your enemy. Now, you ready to get into this a little bit? All right. Let's go back to verse 14. That was just the warm-up. Let's get going. Exodus 18 and 14, it says, When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, What is this you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone? Why do you alone sit as judge? While all these people stand around from you morning till evening, Moses answered him, Because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it's brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees yeah. and instructions. And his father-in-law replied, What you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. What's interesting to me in reading this scripture gives me the first conclusion I have to share with you today. And it's that our out of control schedules are draining our time. We're taking on too much. And maybe just because that's the way we've always done it, we just keep building on to that same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of funny. It, it kind of put me in the mind of some of my holiday decorating. When we first started to move into our home, we just had one tree. And it didn't feel that bad to set up one tree. I'm like, okay, I can get behind that. We'll turn on the music. We'll have a little fun with it. Everybody's having a good time. That's awesome. The next year comes and we're like, you know what? You know what would make this better? Another tree. Was the first tree not good enough? No. You gotta have another one. So what do you do? You add more time in order to find some form of joy, right? So there's two trees. Man, that looks good. We got one upstairs and downstairs now. It's completely practical. I can support that. I can get behind that. So the next year comes and it's like, you know what else would be good? We should hang some lights on the gutter. Oh, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that looks really good. The pictures look good. The, where I'm shopping on Amazon, let's just go ahead and do that. Yeah. So we come in, I get the ladder, and guess what? I'm now investing more time. We don't really think about it like that. We're just thinking about it's just another thing that's going to make us happy or feel like it's going to do something better. Oh, it goes on, my friend. So another year comes. Now we've got the outside looking good. we got a tree up and a tree down. But this, this spot in the back area of the door looks kind of naked and dark. You know what would look really good right there? Another tree. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go. We're, we're in 2021 holiday time, and now I'm thinking I got three trees. I got stuff to hang up outside. And all of a sudden, what the beginning was something that I thought I was enjoying how many of you know where we're going with this in the message today? This, this is not about Jared being unhappy about holiday decorating. Although, if you're unhappy about holiday decorating, I wish you'd give me an amen in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Only a couple, yeah, you're brave. So, it's you get to this point where there's all these things you have already put in your mind you've got to do before you can get to happiness. Without ever thinking about, is all this stuff worth my time? So then here we come to church, we're here for Sunday, and then we think, well, if I do this other thing, well, maybe it'll make me feel better. And so you start investing and building, and well, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and it becomes more about the things that's draining your time. Now, brother, that, I, love, I love doing all these things. Well, okay, have you ever been to church and felt burnt out before? Because that's a real thing. You ever felt like not doing it and thought about trying to make some excuse so somebody else would do it? Nobody's been there. Nobody. Nobody's ever had to 
Yeah. Face the conflict of time. Yeah. Let me tell you something. There'd be a plenty of more people in this house today yeah. if they thought about how they were investing their time. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, being busy and busy-bodied is a very real issue. And it has come to attack God's people. And that's what God put in my spirit about this. Because the Lord's challenging me about my 50 to 60 hours of week at work. And I'm beginning to say, Lord, I need you to move in my job. And the Lord spoke back in my heart and said, I need you to move more for me. And as I begin to really think about what that meant, it means that the extra hours I think yeah. is going to make it better from 5 to 10 in the evening should probably be a little bit more dedicated to praying that God would move so that I don't have to work from 5 to 10. Does anybody know what we're talking about today? When we get to that point where we're in a conflict with somebody, we'll spend all our time calling our friends. We'll talk to them about how it makes us feel. And then the Lord's trying to show us if we just get down and pray for our It's a funny thing. You know, I've been at this attempting to try and preach. I'm not going to say I'm a good preacher or that I'm anything above my station. I try. And I'm about 15 plus years into this thing now. And I found that my greatest growth came with the greatest investment of time. The more that I got in and preached, the more that I got in and supported my brothers and sisters, the more that I gave God instead of that thing that was attacking me, the more that I saw growth. Amen. Moses' father-in-law, how many of you love the in-laws that will tell you the truth? Yeah. Maybe not everybody, that's okay too. But he was being direct about this and saying, you're wearing yourselves out. That's who I came to preach to today. Where are you out there? Are you already dreading the next few weeks because you're already so tired? You may not want to admit it, you may want me to believe I'm the only one here that feels that way, but I already feel tired and I've not even got there yet. Yeah. I'm, already I'm already dreading even getting in the car and having to drive because I don't even want to drive because I have so much dread in my heart about just being busy, just having to be somewhere, just having to do something. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but whether it's your job or whether it's these things you feel like are important to do in order to find fulfillment, there is no greater fulfillment than finding your time in Jesus Christ. He said that if you'd seek him first, he would take care of all these other things and they'd be added to you. What does that tell me? That if I put Christ first above all and give him glory for the gift that he gave me, then all the other things I think that are important and all the other things I think require my time, they all of a sudden begin to fall into place. I'm going to give you a real testimony about this. This week we had probably one of the worst outages I think my company's ever had. I mean, I was up and I think I slept all probably eight or ten hours in four days' time because we were just busy making sure we didn't lose data or records and that everything was flowing and that we were still a revenue-generating company. And I was like scared to death about my job and scared to death about what this was going to mean. In the first couple of days, I was just absolutely overwhelmed. And I was like, I can't give any more time. I've done all I can. And then it was like all at once and all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord came oh, down to yeah. me. Yeah. And said, I'll send you help. And I was thinking, I'm so unworthy to even hear your voice, Lord. I spent all this time spinning my own wheels. I spent all this time doing it my way. But I could have came to you first. Then the last 48 hours of that only got easier. When it felt like it was getting worse. All of a sudden, people that normally don't volunteer to help in times like this were calling me and saying, just give me the, the virtual bridge, I'll join it. Had my vendors that normally wouldn't support us without us paying a whole lot more money to do it calling me and saying, let me come and help you. I'll call people. And they started showing up and they were like, I'll send you lunch if you need it. And I was sitting there thinking, if I had only taken a little time to trust God, 
how much sooner I could have got to my blessing yeah. than I did trying to do it myself. We think the things that we invest our time in are always going to lead us to happiness, but sometimes we need to take a step back and look at what it is we are doing with our time Amen. to see if it is bringing us pure and unadulterated joy in the Lord. Because, my friend, you might even be here this morning and feel like your presence here is a waste of time. But I'm here to preach to you today. That's a trick of the devil. He would want you to think you are here wasting your time, that there's no point in being here, and that next time maybe you'll just skip. But I bind against that spirit that's trying to attack our churches today. I bind against that thought that's trying to keep us from being able to be consistent in our service and faithfulness to the Lord. And I release an anointing in this place today that we would come to ourselves and realize that there is more time to be given to God. take care of all these other things. Yeah. If you believe that, shout yeah! yeah. yeah. So now it doesn't feel so peculiar, does it? I feel like this does tie to a holiday because we all get so busy. But sometimes busy in the wrong thing. Let's go back here. Verse 17. I want to read it again. What you are doing is not good. And yet we know in this moment that we have all been on the other side of this where Moses was standing. He was responding to his father-in-law and said, well, I'm here because they, they come and I'm here to judge and I'm here to give the word of the Lord. Sometimes we'll get stuck in the task of a purpose that we miss the intent yes. of what the purpose is bringing. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. What the father-in-law was being direct about was the wear and tear that this was having on the people. And whether we see it or not, the continued hustling and bustling and letting the things we're doing continue to get faster without any self-control or temperance or ability to slow it down, hear me today, is slowly building from a part-time hindrance to a full-time stoppage on our walk with God. Okay? Okay. Let's get off the work train for a minute. Let's talk about our hobbies. Shields are up. It ain't going to hurt me today. Let's talk about our hobbies. Well, I like to get out. I like to go. Don't get me wrong. If you're connected with me, you know I like to travel too. I like to get out just like the next person. But at the same time, when we truly take a look at the things that we're investing in, is it giving God glory? is if we were found and where we were in the very moment that we're standing, give God reverence. Sometimes we'll lean in on our hobbies to try to find fulfillment and happiness because we're afraid to take time to understand our purpose. Amen, Brother Jared. That's all right. I'm going to go get my own amen from the back this morning because this is tough stuff to talk about. Sometimes we'll spend another extra weekend here or there because we want to avoid facing the truth of what it is that we're doing is wearing us out or what it is that we're doing isn't helping us bring fulfillment to ourselves spiritually. And sometimes we'll use hobbies as comforts and try to bring comfort to problems, but yet that comfort is false fire and you ultimately just end up doing more of and more and more of that same thing, trying to find some form of joy. And by the time you get to it, you're still miserable, you're broke, yeah. and you have no time. Right. <laughs> Nobody's been there. Amen. Nobody's ever made an ill-advised investment. I'll only confess for myself because I'm not going to go into your dirty laundry. <laughs> but sometimes, I, you know, I used to fancy myself a you know, piddler of musical things. So I found myself in a season where I was like buying extra guitars and trying to work on them. And the more that I found time to do that, th those little things, these other little things came up where, well, when's the next time we're going to get a date night? Somebody that's married that understands where I'm at, say amen. amen. <laughs> when are we going to find time to get back to church soon? Or, you know, when are we going to find time to visit our grandparents or to spend time with people or, when are we going to go spend time with family that we've not seen in a long time? Mm -hmm. Well, 
got to get this other thing done because I've started this project. I really want to see this through. Yeah. Does anybody understand where we're going with this? Yeah. Like, at, at the time, it feels like a very sound decision that we're making that we want to go do this and put time into this thing. When perhaps the Lord is trying to open up another door to lead you to a greater joy than maybe what you see now. But before we know it, and here I am, I'll, I'll confess, before we know it, we have so many guitars that we have no place to put them. And then, you know, we now have the unspoken rule that if I can't fit it on the shelves in the garage, I can't buy another. So that means I have to get rid of one to buy another. Isn't that funny? But needless to say, all my piddling days are behind me because I realized that none of that brought me any joy. And now I've realized I can pay somebody else to take their time to fix it, and I don't have to. Amen, Brother Jerry. Yeah. I do the same thing about the lawn outside, too. Don't judge me. Sometimes you've got to pick and choose where you want to invest Amen. in order to develop your relationships. The one with your spouse? Amen, Brother Jared. The one with your family? Yeah. Come on, Jared, preach it. Or especially the one in the house of the Lord. Sometimes we'll make time for date night. Sometimes we'll make time for mama and daddy. But we find ourselves running out of time when it comes to being here in the house of the Lord. And even when we get here, sometimes we're not putting in, making it worth our time to God. I don't want to just be here. I don't want to just... Understand what my purpose could be. I want to live my purpose. How many of you out there this morning? I want to live my purpose. I want to know and understand what God has called me to do. My God. Yes. Do we want to go on? Yeah. I don't know, Jerry. It's getting pretty rough. So here's the questions I'll leave with you this morning. How far do things have to go before we know we're in too deep? Or too busy. Or overwhelmed. How many times will we say yes out of fear before we can say no to preserve some time away for rest and dedication to God? If we're not too careful, we'll find ourselves to the point of being present in body, but absent in spirit. Oh, so true. Right, no, brother, you, no, you're way off base this morning, Jerry. You don't, no, no, that's, that's not how it is. But yet, do we not find ourselves at times struggling even just to enjoy the presence of the Lord with each other in a church service? Yeah. Yeah. Woo, somebody help me preach this morning. When we are struggling to be able to have church with people that also want to come have church, we are here, we're in our body, we're present, but our spirit is weak because we have not taken enough time so that we can do a greater work while we're here. Amen. That's preaching this morning. I can't be any more plain about that. Amen. However you represent yourself and your time to the Lord is a direct reflection on your character and what people see out of your heart. Amen. Let's go to the 23rd Psalm real quick. I'm going to talk about what it is that God brings to help us battle this fight against priority and time. I'm going to read the ESV out of this, just for this part. Forgive me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, and he restores my soul. Three real critical parts that I want to talk about here. When we give God the acknowledgement of being above all, mm -hmm. we won't live in want. And if we truly lean in on God, we will find rest. And when we are truly in a state of being thirsty and desiring for more, God will lead us there. Amen. Amen. That's right. True growth in our life mm -hmm. is a choice that you have to make. Yes. I can't preach it down. And make you any better than where you are at right now. All I can do is open your eyes and cause you to think about what you can do to make it different for your life. Today we're going to be faced with choices we're going to make when we leave here. And either we can get back on the same bus that we've been riding on and coasting through life. Heading from obligation to obligation. 
or we can truly start examining and discerning the way that God intended for us to, to understand, should I be doing this? Is this the place I should be? Am I doing what I should be doing? That consciousness that checks us, that causes us to think about what we should and should not do, that's the Spirit of the Lord trying to come alive into your life. Yes. Yes. Brother, I love to feel the Holy Ghost and fire. I love to observe the gifts and the demonstrations of the gifts of God. I love it too. But in order to feel the fullness and fire of God, we have to begin to understand what it is that we're doing Amen. with where we are Amen. and who we're with yes. and why we're there and our purpose. Amen. If you want to feel more of the fire of God, the first thing that you can fundamentally do is understand where all your time goes. Yeah. If I went to look at the logs of what you've watched on Netflix or your DVR, how much time would I see on there? Brother Jared, you're now coming to real close territory where we're about to fight. That's all right. I knew this was going to be tough when the Lord gave it to me. That's why I was kind of scared to bring it this morning. If I looked at all the, all the minutes that have been spent on your phone doing the doom scroll, how many of you know what I'm talking about? You just, you just keep scrolling, hoping to find something that's just going to give you a bigger reaction than the last one. And you just keep going and there's nothing there. But the scroll never seems to end and you just keep going. Doom scroll. If you're on social media, you get it. If not, it don't matter. If I had looked at the time that we have seen ourselves trying to scroll through something to find something, how much time would that be? Don't get me wrong. I think it's awesome that the church puts things out there for people that need it. That's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about just this endless pursuit of something we don't even understand. And do you know that companies and organizations, that's what they hope and thrive that you're going to do. Because yes. the more that you do that, they begin to deliver junk that you never needed. Stuff you never needed to hear, stuff you never needed to see, and you begin to fill in things in your life that was never meant to take your time. I wish that I could make this a shouting type of message, but the truth of the matter is this is a grown-up adult message where you're just going to have to put your big boy and big girl pants on. And understand that this is real. This is truth. This is life. This is the thing that we decide that we can do to be better than where we are. Yes. And it all comes down to how we make a choice. Amen. Right. Amen. With where we are and how we use the Amen. moment that we're in. Yeah. Now, I could come all this way and drive all this way and not do what I'm called to do and not sing. And I could just come and be a part of the body. But there's something about quantity over quality mm -hmm. that begins to come to mind. Yes. I would rather get here and do my best right. than to put it off for another time. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe next time I'll get up and shout with them. Yeah. Oh, Sister Debbie sang the house down. I could have just walked around and praised the Lord that morning, yeah. but mm -hmm. maybe I'll get it next time. Yeah. Yeah. Brother, I'd love for you to come and Preach for us. Well, it's been a while since I preached. Maybe next time. Or I'd sure love to hear you sing that song. Or really would love for you to come and do this thing with us. Well, I just don't feel like I'd be good enough. Maybe another time. You see, I feel like the enemy, in a very sneaky and subtle way, is causing us to subconsciously be busy enough to reject our true purpose. Yes. Amen. 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 I can dance all over that one. Amen. That's good stuff. Amen. When we are battling against our purpose, we will feel unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. Come on. Let's read on. I want to make sure I don't go too far off the reservation. Let's go back to Exodus 18 and verse 18. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. Yeah. Hear me this morning. Don't get caught in the being overloaded or in trying to do a bunch of good things and be defeated by quantity instead of prevailing by quality. God wants our moments, our encounters, our worship, 
Not to just be meaningful because we showed up hundreds of times to church, but that we showed up to actually have church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I want my encounters with God not just, just to be another one that I can put on the list and say that I've been serving God for 16 years instead of 15 years. I want to make sure that while I'm along this ride and this journey through every year, that my encounters with God are beginning to be even sweeter than they were before. But the only way that begins to happen is when I put in the time that is needed to make it meaningful. You can either stand and worship and give God praise, or you can look on and say, maybe next time. But I'm here to tell you, if you want breakthrough in your house sooner than you've had it, if you want healing to break through your home, if you want your marriages to come back together, if you want your families to begin to understand a greater love and forgiveness, you're going to have to invest the amount of time that it takes to truly feel It's time to put those hobbies to the side and check yourself and see if you are putting in all that you really can. Listen, you'll still get to do stuff from time to time. Every now and again, I find myself being able to practice music at home. And when I know those are God, yeah. I'll write a song in like less than 20 minutes. It just comes like that. That happened to me over the past few days. It was so wonderful. Uh -huh. Can't wait to come here and sing it soon. But let me tell you, the time that we give God is just as powerful as your praises. Yes. Yeah. Just as powerful as your worship. Mm -hmm. Just as powerful as your obedience. Because without you giving God the opportunity yeah. with a window of your life to bless you more, oh, hallelujah. time will pass you by. Yes, it will. You see? Somebody... Prepare yourself. It's about to get real. You see, there's plenty of churches I've went to in my life where time had passed it by. And what you used to be able to feel when you went in there mm -hmm. Come on. was gone. Oh. Oh. And a lot of the same people yeah. felt like it was the same format and program. But something was different. Let me tell you. Living out of ourselves over a period of time has an effect on our spirit man and spirit woman. Yeah. <clears throat> and before we know it, church, if we don't heed to these warnings like God's giving today and make sure that we're giving him our best with the time that we have, people may walk in here one day and time pass us by. And it'll go from saying, that's a church I know I can go and feel God to. Yeah. That's a church I used to be able to go to uh -huh. and feel God. I feel that checking in my spirit. I don't want us to get there. And I'm not saying we're there now. But I also know that God warns us before such a time so that we would hear it and have a decision and a power and authority to change the narrative and work it for our good. So if God has taken the time to use me right now to talk about this, then I pray in the name of Jesus that you not be mad at Brother Jared. That you not say that this wasn't for me. That you would take a step back and look at your life and say, what can I do better with my time? And the Lord will bless you abundantly. 
carefully, if you'll examine your heart and see what it is that you're doing when you had time to pray but you didn't, when you had time to praise but you wouldn't, when you had time to stand up and support your ministers and your singers but you chose not to, when they ask you to do something and you said, I don't have time, when you had the opportunity to improve your marriage and you said, I don't have time, the Lord is trying to get us to a place where we'll examine what we do with our lives. Amen. Is this one hurting you like it hurt me? I was pruning one of the trees outside of my house last night. Now I'm not going to unbutton them, but I've got the branch scratches. It's proof. Pruning's hard. Lots of branches I had to cut down to make sure that thing would grow back better. Evaluating your time and your priorities yeah. is pruning your spiritual character. Yeah. Amen, Brother Junior. Yeah. 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 If you never prune, how can you expect growth to return to your life again? That's right. Amen. This is as plain as I can be about it. If you do not give God priority, then you're directly missing out on things that were intended to be added unto you. And I'll tell you what, I don't know how much time we have left in this walk of life. Yeah. But I'm not going to live my life in a watered down, washed up, right. dried up Christian life. Right. I refuse. Amen. Oh, That's yeah. why I love coming here. Because yeah. I feel like we've got a great group of people yeah. that wants to do for God greater than yeah. we've ever known before. Right. But I'm here to tell you that the enemy has come and is coming to attack our time. And God is using this message today to hold us accountable and have us ask ourselves, are we wearing ourselves out on the wrong stuff? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Let me read this last part to you today. They can go ahead and come and prepare a song. Exodus 18, verse 21. Select capable men from all the people, men who fear God. Trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for all the people at all times, but have them bring every difficult case to you. Of the simple cases, they can decide themselves. That will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. That's Exodus 18, 21, and 22. You know what that was saying? That's the modern day work smarter, not harder. Yeah. Have other people step in to help you take every case. So you're not taking all of them, Moses. You're killing yourself. Mm -hmm. Can I just spend that a little bit more for the Moseses in this room today? Mm -hmm. Take the time to see where you can get help in your life and put things out of the way that are hindering you. You're wearing yourself out. Amen. 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 Somebody say amen in this house today. Amen. You may not want to hear it. You may think you're fine, and that's okay. We may be past the point of giving you the message, and you'll just have to learn it the hard way. But if you're open-minded and open-hearted, I pray you heed this word today. Because the Lord's trying to show you that help can be there for you. Yeah. Just like it was for, for me this week when I heard help is on the way. Yeah. And I was thinking, I'm so unworthy of this. And yet God sent me help. And what was going to take me probably all through the weekend where I would have had to say I couldn't be here today ended up ending at such a time that I was able to not only get it done, but then also make sure I was prepared to be able to be here and do this with you all this morning. So I know that if we let God in to do these things, He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Please be reminded today that no matter what is coming in the next few weeks, in your, in your family gatherings, your church services, that you have the ability to find rest and build your strength greater than you've known. Not only for yourself, but for those around you that you're going to be around here soon around the holiday. It's ever so important that we remember that God took the time for us when we did it for Him. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For it is grace, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works that any one would boast. Isaiah 30 and 15. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. 
in repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. It's so easy for us as people to make choices we feel like are for our good. But without God in it, we're only setting ourselves up for failure. That's right, amen. Go ahead and stand with us, and I'll leave you with this parting thought. If there is ever a time for us to make a decision to be closer to the Lord, it's today. If we want people to continue to see a church on fire, that they may be drawn to be saved, delivered, and set free, then we need to make the time for God. To let them see God in this greater. If you need prayer this morning, if you feel like you're under attack, if you were like me this week and you felt overwhelmed with everything going on at your job, in your home, in your life, God wants to help you. How many of you believe that? So as they sing, if you want to come up for prayer, we're here for you.